Professor Wurgelis here. We just finished lecture number three. We're moving on to lecture number four. Now, lecture number four, we're going to talk about CSS3 multi-column layout. So here's going to be the slides. If you want to download them, go ahead. I recommend to download them so you can write notes. And here's the code. Now, make sure when you download the code, put it in a spot that you're going to remember. So I usually like to create a directory for this course called CS2830. And I will create a lecture folder for it. So I usually have all my lectures in a folder. This is going to be lecture number four. And we're going to look at CSS3 multi-column layouts. Okay. I'm going to have slides and code. So maybe even put one even further, put the code for this lecture. And there may be multiple sets of code. I may have the before class content or the during class content. And then the code posted Let's start online. With the slides, starting from slide number one, like I said, we're talking about CSS3 multi column layouts. Let's take a look at the concepts before we get into the code. Now, we looked at float and clear, but let's review because float and clear is on the challenge and it's going to be on the exam. So, the float property specifies how an element should float. Used to position and layout on web pages, usually you have picture on the left, text on the right. Picture on the right, text on the left, can be used for columns, can be used for a nav bar. In its simplest use, the flows property can be used to wrap text around images. Now, when you use a float, you must specify the clear. Clear property specifies what element can float beside the clear element and on which side. When clearing floats, usually you match the clear to the float. So if you float left, you should clear left. However, we saw that we had some problems with that. So then we introduced the clear hack. Now, the clear hack would guarantee that if you call that selector properly, that that clear is going to work. Now, if I forget the clear or I write the clear and it's not working properly, let's say I wanted this div to uh, float left and this next div should be below it. Now, if I forget the clear, it's going to come up above. You can try to put margin on it, padding. It's not going to work because the clear is not being executed properly. But if the clear is executed properly, then the next div should be right below the, the div there. So if I do a clear, it's going to make sure that it moves to the next row and the clear and float will be working properly. Now, that's just a review. Let's take a look at floats.html. We're going to code floats. We're going to calculate the physical width. On the exam, you're going to need to calculate the physical width as well. So I'm making sure you have this down. So continue the next video. We'll go ahead and move to that coding exercise.